Hello, everyone. My name is Laura Decker. I'm 18 years. And two years ago, I became the youngest ever to circumnavigate the globe single-handed. Now, like any of these young inspirations today, I just had a dream, and I just went for it. Well, I'm going to start with a short video just to give you a little impression of what I did. From the age I was six, I have always been on the water, on the water and, and dinghy boats. By the time I was seven, I was competitive racing. By the time I was 10, I had bought my own seaworthy yacht that I bought with the own money that I'd worked for for the past years. Now, my mom isn't really a sailor. My dad is, he built his own boats and for seven years they sailed around the world, even though my mom not liking it. <laughs> it's quite impressive. So. After a couple of years, when they were in Fangerai in New Zealand, I was born. And the next five years, I sailed with them back to Holland, where they originally came from. And there, my mom really was fed up with the sailing. And by that time, my sister Kim was born as well and living with two little kids on a small boat. Um, I guess she didn't really like it anymore. So we moved into a house. Um, but I didn't. Um, the marriage of my parents sadly didn't seem to cope as well with the land life as the life on sea, and they divorced. So as a six-year-old, I had the choice who I wanted to live with, and I chose for my dad. So my sister automatically went to my mom, and so our lives separated. My dad had started building his ninth boat for himself, this time a little bit bigger than the others, a 60-foot Norwegian fish cutter, which by now is almost finished. And he started that when I was six, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I grew up on that boat. I grew up on shipyards, around boats and water. So soon enough, I started sailing, right? So as a 10-year-old, having my own seaworthy yacht, uh, I sailed around the whole of Holland, where I, I pretty much grew up after, after the big trip. Mm, I sailed mostly alone, together with my dog, but he was a bit of a useless crew. Really, I mean, he protected me well, but he didn't really help in sailing much. So I really had to do everything myself. And so over the years, I learned everything I had to know about navigation, weather systems, anything really that I could know possibly about sailing. I learned a lot from my dad, but actually I learned most from just doing it because I wanted to. Um, by the time I was 11, I did that again, went a little bit further to the islands above Holland, on the ocean. At the age of 13, I sailed to England alone. Now, I didn't think my parents would think that was a good idea, so I just didn't tell them anything. Um, the police had to pick me up in England and report me back to Holland, but I knew that I wanted to go further. That trip just, I knew I was ready for it. I had crossed the English Channel, and that was something I, I wanted to do. The English Channel is very busy. There is a lot of boats. Um, it's very difficult navigating, and the weather is not exactly great either. 
So having achieved that, I thought, all right, I can sail around the world. And I started to get my boat ready, which was quite a small boat, 22 feet. And um, well, there were really a lot of people who liked my ideas as much as I did. So the whole Dutch government and all the people in Holland who got to know about my plan soon enough after someone had heard of it, threw it in the media, not exactly good for me. So a whole year I had to fight against the government. Uh, eight court cases, but I kept going. I wanted to do this. This was my dream, my goal, and I kept going. So I fought. And well, fighting against the government is quite hard. But I found a little gap and I left. By that time I'd upgraded my boat to a 40 foot catch, uh, also named Guppy, and I still live on her. Uh, so at the age of 14 I left from the south of Europe alone, went to the Canary Islands, Cape Verde, onto the Caribbean, learning that a home for some reason doesn't really clean itself. <laughs> All right, so you actually got to do the laundry. How does that work? Mm, cooking food, spaghetti. <laughs> um, so yes, uh, no fridge in the boat, no shower in the boat, just basic navigation, because I don't like sponsors. I don't like people telling me where to go and what to do. Well, that means you have to do everything yourself. <laughs> well, I learned really quickly. Um, I cooked for myself, I did the laundry for myself. There were no people when I got ashore. So I had to repair everything myself as well. And um, well, through the Caribbean, onto the Pacific, to the top of, South of Australia. By that time I had sailed quite a bit and I, I knew the boat quite well. So I wanted to have the next challenge. I sailed from Australia to South Africa without stopping, 6,000 nautical miles, 48 days. Why? Just because I wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> well, my boat's not really set up for long trips. I mean, 150 liters of water, um, 100, 200 liters of fuel, um, that's it. And then a bit of food, a lot of spaghetti. Um, <laughs> so, well, I thought I would just go for it. If it doesn't work out, I'll just go and sail to an island. There will probably be enough rain, so I can drink, um, I'll be fine. So I just went for it. And that was one of the greatest trips ever, because to be out there, just with nature, going with the wind, I had two weeks of no wind, which was very frustrating. Then I had a couple storms, which I was really happy about after having no wind, um, even though I was not coming closer to my goal. But mentally, that trip was awesome, because I got to know myself so well and I got to fulfill this dream that I had. I had set my goals and I just went for it. So arriving in South Africa after 48 days was the best feeling ever. I didn't want to come back on land. I was happy on the ocean. Just being out there with the peace, it's quiet, it's awesome. And in South Africa I stayed for a week, then I went on back to the Caribbean. Also another 6,000 miles straight, 40 on, 41 days. So um, a year and a day later from I, when I had left the Caribbean, I came back, even though I'd sailed longer alone, of course, and well, yes, fulfilled my, my dream that I had my whole life. What the heck am I gonna do now, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I was just sitting there on the pier thinking, oh man, I don't really wanna go back to Holland. What, the heck, what, what am I gonna do there? Study? Nah. I, I mean, I studied a bit on the boat, I'd done my high school, but it sounded a bit boring to me. So um, I just kept sailing. And I kept going to New Zealand just to see where I came from, where I was born. And I loved it here. So uh, last year I arrived here, I simply stayed. I traveled a lot. I wrote a book about my story. And um, well, I still have a lot of dreams. You can never have enough of them. But the thing is to actually go for it. So my next big dream is to become a skipper, a captain on bigger ships. So I don't have to go land, back to land to, to work. So I can just stay and do what I love. So, well, this is what I want to give to you all today. If you have a dream, and I know that every single person of you has a dream, even though you might not realize it, there is something that you really, really, really want. So, go for it. Don't be afraid, it might be hard. Yes, 
It will be hard. I had to fight a long way. But how harder it is, how more rewarding it is to fulfill your dreams. Thank you.